Jesus, she's cool. <laughs> So, death-packed angels dwell in the grandest of Orzov cathedrals, where they surround themselves with wealth and wretched vassals, utterly in their thralls. Sweet! Posing as a beneficent god, a death-packed angel attracts petitioners who beg for blessings. So, what does is, what is her stat block look like? Uh, 90 fly speed, 30 move speed, 18 armor, 175 um, hit points. She's got immunity to charm, exhaustion, and frightened. A huge pile of resistances exploitation of the debtors as a bonus action target a creature charmed by it it deals 2d10 necrotic damage and she gets that much temporary hp yeah 18 natural armor not plate <laughs> uh flyby right flyby is the angel thing it's like vigilance uh she can cast command detect evil and good charm person darkness suggestion and raise dead and has advantage on saving throws against spells she has a scythe that deals 2d4 plus 4 damage and then 68 necrotic with a reach of 10 feet. She can make two attacks, and one of those can be a substitution of Chains of Obligation. Uh, any creature charmed by it makes a DC 19 saving throw become paralyzed until it takes damage or one minute. Damn. Yeah, and she would be surrounded by her, her thralls, right? What's the CR on this lady? CR 14. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, Archon of the Triumvirate. Oh, these are the bad, the big bad Azorius guys. They ride Felidar, which are these things. Yeah. Supernatural embodiments of the harshest aspects of law and order. Eternal riders. Uh, if an Archon is overthrown, it magically returns to its, uh, its, uh, place this is a cr 14 monster uh the archon has 18 arts armor class 144 hit points 30 foot speed flies around on the felidar bunch of immunities uh target a creature and determine what laws it's broken in the last 24 hours <laughs> okay uh calm emotion command and compel duel at will uh if it isn't mounted it bonus actions back onto the mount it swings with the Hammer of Justice, which is uh, 2d6 plus 5, and then 48 force damage. And each creature within uh, that it can see within 120 feet, DC 18 wisdom save, or drop any weapons it's holding, ends any concentration, becomes charmed for a minute. The charmed creature can repeat the saving throw, uh, and if it does, it's immune for 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> Just drop your weapon, spells go away, become charmed. And then it can take three legendary actions, uh, rejoin mount, make a hammer of justice, then the mount attacks, or detention. Uh, any creature within 60 feet makes a DC 18 save or be magically, tele be magically teleported to a harmless demiplane until the end of the Archon's next turn. One round iso cubes. <laughs> Rad. Pretty cool. Arclight Phoenix. Uh, so this card just really annoys you, I think, is the way that that works. It's just it's very annoying, and, and it keeps hitting you in your face over and over and over. Let's see what it does in D&D. &D. 120 fly speed, zero foot speed otherwise. It has no legs. AC 16, 142 hit points, resistant to thunder and regular attacks, immune to lightning and poison, immune to a bunch of conditions. It's an elemental. It's got flyby. The first time it touches the ground, it takes 2d10 force damage. <laughs> That's funny. So if you can force it to the ground, it takes damage. Uh, it can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. Anything that touches it or hits it with a melee attack while within five feet takes lightning damage. In addition, it can enter, a hot enter your space and stop there. If it does, you take 2d8 damage. Uh, if it dies, it blows up. Everybody in 30 feet takes 36 or 88 lightning damage. It leaves behind a tiny warm egg with a mysium shell. It creates an embryo of a new phoenix. It hatches when the area is... Uh, if it takes lightning damage, or if a creature touches it and expends a spell slot whose combined levels equal... Spell slots equal to 13 or more. When it hatches, it releases a new arc light phoenix that appears in the egg's space. Uh, its attack is it touches you, uh, and it deals 68 damage, 
and then deals... Lightning jumps to a second creature, which might make take 68 damage. This is cute. So this bit expends sl spell slots up to level 13 or more. Um, that's what the card does. You play three... You play three uh, instants or sorceries, and it comes back to life. Cool. So yeah, Arclight Touch jumps and then hits somebody else. Uh, Conclave Dryad. So the Conclave Dryad is like a Dryad spellcaster with some some Druid abilities. Vine Staff. To uh, capture someone, it can summon a mount. This is neat. Suppress magic. Target a magic item. Oh, she can destroy an artifact. It's the Night of Autumn. Yep. <laughs> That's so cute. I love the way they've incorporated. Now, I wouldn't have understood this if I was just reading the book, but so much of this is just straight from the card. Like this card, when you play it, it can destroy a, a magic item, right? It can, it can suppress magic item. That's so cool. Nice work, team. Nice work. <laughs> Here's the Rakdos Cackler Demon. Small jabbering jesters that spice up Rakdos' performance with their chaotic antics. So what are these guys? These guys are uh, CR one half. Oh, nice. That's cool. Little CR one half demons. Okay, so a CR one half demon with 15 armor and 10 hit points. Um, resistance to a bunch of stuff. They can innately cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter or Firebolt. Uh, when they die, they release a dying laugh that scars the minds of nearby creatures. Anyone within 10 feet makes a DC say, uh, 10 save or 11 save and takes 1d4 psychic damage. <laughs> uh, they can mimic any sound they've ever heard. Um, they can bite you for 1d4 plus 3 or they can whip you with a spike chain for 1d6 plus 3. They seem pretty good for a, a half CR. Like Tasha's laughter is a, is serious business. Yeah, seems like it should be higher than CR one half. I mean, I guess their spell save DC is pretty low, right? DC 11. Fun. I like them. Cacklers. Master of Cruelties. When a Master of Cruelties steps up as a ringleader to a Rakdos show, the audience can be assured of a performance they'll remember for the rest of their lives. However brief that might be. <laughs> Damn. All right, what do they got? Aura of Bloodlust. When any other creature starts within 30 feet, they have to make a save or immediately make the attack action against a random creature. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Uh, if no creatures are within range, they throw their weapon at somebody. <laughs> uh, if a creature within 60 feet dies, they gain 15 temporary hit points and gains advantage on all attacks, ability checks, and saving throws. Uh, he can charm person or cost crown of madness or dominate person and is resistant to spells. And then as his actions, he's got spears. He can attack with the spears or each creature within 120 feet must succeed at a DC 17 save or be charmed for an hour while charmed. Their speed is zero. Uh, when a charm creature takes damage, you can repeat the saving throw. Uh, otherwise it gets a save. Uh, oh no, that's it. And if it gets a save, it's free. Damn. It's badass. What's his CR? 12? 9. CR 9. Cool. So you just freeze in place, captivated by him. Until somebody slaps you in the face. A Sire of Insanity. Another Rakdos demon. The Sire of Insanity, let's see. Uh, they bring recruits into his presence, and it breaks the new cultist's mind. Big bip bipedal lizard. Um, so this guy looks like his main jam. He's got all this demon stuff. He's got an aura of mind erosion, which gives you disadvantage on wisdom and charisma saves and checks. Uh, at the start of your turn, he can suppress his aura. Got a bunch of, like, mental affecting spells. Yeah, the Mara have some new interns. Yeah, for real. Cool. Okay, so he he's like the the guy that like he's the hype man. He warms them up, and then everybody else, everybody else become like gets to do their show. Mind erosion. Yep. So here is a uh, Devkaran Lich. This is the fungal fungal Lich. Um. So the example here is Storev, 
a leader of the erstwhile um yeah underrealm lich that's right uh so the underrealm lich the dev and lich here gets 10 hit points every turn unless it takes fire or radiant damage shit ton of spells because it's a 14 level spell caster noxious noxious touch which poisons someone uh dc 17 save or poison they get to repeat it every turn uh, and then uh, they get to cast a cantrip as a legendary action. They can noxious touch as a legendary action or disrupt life. Each creature within 30 feet takes a DC 17 save or 66 necrotic damage. Cool. Devkar and Lich. So it's like a special Lich just just for, for Ravnica. Like there's regular Liches too, but... There's the Felidar. A celestial creature whose nature reflects an inherent devotion to law and order. Weird Aslan. So there are winged ones and regular ones, and it looks like they can magically bond, and they can jump on you and bite you. Some of them can fly. Okay. There's the winged Felidar. Wait, that's the same Felidar. <laughs> I think the art is just for just the one of them. Blood Fray Giant. Giants in the Cult of Rakdos act as enforcers, bouncers, and even sometimes pillars, holding mobile platforms that serve as stages for Rakdos performances. Holy shit. That's so cool. Can you imagine you like walk into a building and in the center, there's like a huge arena and in the middle, there's a giant and he's holding a platform and on the platform, gladiators are battling. That's so cool. <laughs> Man. So what do they do on their own? Blood fray giants. Uh, they have a chain attack that can grapple. They can throw rocks at you. And after a creature the giant can see is dealt damage, uh, the giant gets to make a chain attack on them. Rad. It's like a Super Smash Bros. level. Cool. Big blood fray giant. Uh, here's another giant. This guy's a good boy. Um, this is a guardian giant of the Boros Legion. Uh, he's got vigilance, so he can't be surprised. Gets to make a bunch of attacks, and when an attacker makes an attack against a creature within 10 feet of him, he can impose disadvantage on the attack roll as a reaction. That's cool. I like that. Uh, there's an Orzov giant. Serves as guards, executioners, and thugs, the muscle of the guild. Um, so these guys... They have focus. Uh, they target a creature and make it their focus. It remains their focus for a minute uh, or until it dies. When they make an attack roll, they get an extra d4 against it. If they attack a different target, minus d4. Oh, neat. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, uh, same, though. <laughs> I think it's me, but if I don't have any hair. Yeah, big gruel baby. Sunder Shaman. Angry Giants, the channel of rage into brutal attacks. So what do they get? Uh, 20 armor class. 138 hit points. Advantage on all melee attack rolls. Oh, they just get like reckless attack. Okay. They are a siege monster and dex, uh, advantage on dex stealth to hide in rocky terrain, which is important. Uh, which is important because, um, yeah, I don't know what a stone is. Uh, it's important because they live in ruins. Can you imagine, like, you walk by and you just don't see this, like, enormous, terrifying giant? That's so cool. Uh, it's funny that they're shamans, but they have no spellcasting ability. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Anger is a religion. They have the power of the stone, okay? All right, flying horrors. Spread fear and despair in the citizenry and carry out assassinations. There are three base types of horror, uh, and then you you modify them, and they cause they cause madness. Cool. Flying horror. What else we got? Shadow horror. Ooh, that's a cool one and lashing lashing horror no skittering Ugh. 
<laughs> Yikes. Skittering horrors. Cool. Good. Fantastic. I don't ever want the, to see them ever. Stay away from me. Those who die with unpaid debts to the Orzov Syndicate don't get a reprieve. Instead, their spirits serve the Syndicate till they've worked off their obligation. They are CR1 creatures with incorporeal movement and withering touch for 3d6 damage. They have immunities to pretty much everything. And they deal, uh, they're immune to cold, necrotic, and poison. These things are actually kind of scary. These guys could mess you up. Like, 3d6 necrotic damage, if you don't have magic weapons, like, you're dealing them half damage, and they're flat out immune to three different damage types. That's cool. Scary. Okay, so people who are asking about weirds, this is the weirds. So a weird is two different uh, unusual elemental types merged together. So a, this is a blister coil weird. Um, the blister coil weird is an anthropomorphic brute formed of water and molten rock. It absorbs energy from magical fire, causing its ooze-like body to increase in size. Okay. Uh, they feed on fire. Uh, so they are immune to poison. They're resistant to cold and fire. Um, they have a bunch of commu uh, immunities. 13 AC, fairly low hit points. They're CR4. And if you deal damage to them with fire... Their size increases one category. If there isn't enough room, it becomes the maximum size possible. While it's weird or bigger, it makes strength checks with advantage. If it starts gargantuan, it releases an explosion. Each creature takes 8d6 fire damage or half as much on a successful save. Oh my god. It, so here's the thing. Here's what you do. If you want to fight, if you're fighting the is it, you put a weird up front, you put two spellcasters behind it, and you just have the spellcasters fucking pummeling it with fire spells to make it bigger and bigger and bigger until it starts blowing off. Yeah, you just keep firebolting it. That's so good. And it like vents or yeah, or two of those flamethrowers, right? You just just horse them down with flames. And then, oh, man, that's so cool. So because he's if it starts its turn at Gargantuan, it just blows up and fire shoots off of it. Uh, and then it goes back to medium and they keep they keep pumping it up. Um, it can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide. If it does, it burns things with fire damage. Any creature that touches it or hits it with a melee attack takes fire damage and it sheds bright light. Uh, it does punching for bludgeoning, uh, or fire damage and the damage gets bigger as it gets bigger too. That's so cool. And yeah, they could, I guess they could chain react off each other, right? Oh, they totally could because if one of them, if one of them is, is big and one of them is small, this one shoots fire all over this guy then he goes down to little. This one starts getting bigger. Then it gets big and shoots fire. And pretty soon, your screen is covered in elemental boobs. But that's a cool idea. I like that. You put two of them together, and they just start fireballing each other. But then eventually they die, right? Because they're, they're resistant to the damage. They're not immune to it. So you have to, yeah, you make nukes out of them, and then they eventually would go away. But yeah, on their own, they're kind of weird. That's neat. Okay, so that's a blister coil weird. Um, a flux charger, uh, is elemental lightning, fire, and smoke. This is a flux charger. Uh, a flux charger's museum frame is suggestive of an angel. A faceplate is meant to give it personality, but most people find its solemn expression and unblinking stare more unnerving than relatable. Okay. Flux charger. What do you do? Uh, obviously a bunch of immunities. Uh, whenever a spell that deals lightning damage includes one or more flux chargers in its area, the spell deals 2d8 extra damage. They're flat out immune to lightning, so they make lightning better. Uh, and they can cast arc lightning, so it jumps from targets. Uh, but if they hit or miss, they take force damage after resolving the attack. Yeah, they're like pylons. That's so cool. I think there's one more weird. Yeah, cast lightning bolt through it. Uh, galvanize weird. Uh, this is lightning and ice. They serve with cheerful stupidity as guardians and laborers. Rigid body of elemental ice with a core of lightning. Uh, when it dies, it blows up and sends ice and lightning everywhere. Uh, and it can punch you. It's a CR1 weird. 
Nice. Any more weirds? Got any more weirds for me, is it? Nope. Now we're getting into the Crassus. So if you were in the Simic Combine, you, you make weird creatures. Uh, they're all amphibious. They all have bite and claw. And then they're like shark lizard toads. Yeah, fish crab shark lizard toads. So category one, category two, and then I think there's like tables for, for generating them. Oh, there's even bigger ones. Cat three crassus. Holy shit, that guy's huge. <laughs> oh man, it's an alligator turtle snail? Crab, crab leg, alligator, snail, turtle. That's a big boy. Um, cool. Terrifying. And then, yeah, you use the tables we looked at before to add um, mutations to them. Um, and then we have crawl warriors. So these are the, the insect creatures that live in the Undercity. Yep, crawl warriors. Uh, one half. They're like kobold kind of style. Um, they can climb, but then there's also winged ones that can fly. Interesting that taking the same creature, applying a fly stat is not enough to bring its CR up. Whoa. Okay. Great. A crawl death priest. That's badass too. The highest role in crawl society. Uh, they lead to the buzzing chants of the crawl rites. Um, the current leader of the crawl is a death priest named Mazarek. Uh, so this, this guy, this, this, this crawl bug buddy, uh, do they have spells? Interesting. A priest, like a, like a, it's a title, not an ability. So they don't have spells. They just have lots of hit points and armor and sticks. Wait a second. Is this? No, it's not. It's not. Or is it? Is this a thief? That's not the art for it, but. I just want, I want a thief of, of sanity so bad. I want a thief of sanity so bad. <laughs> oh, he did have spells. It just wasn't on his block. Okay. But this is pretty cool anyway. The Night Vale Specters, welcome to Night Vale, are hooded undead guardians that ride flying creatures called Gloam Wings. Oh, now we know what that, that thing is that the thief of sanity flies around on. Gloam Wings. Ah, okay. Um, so let's see, uh, Night Vale Spectre is created when a mind magic erases a person's identity, leaving a mind so broken it can no longer live. Working in advertising will also do that to you. Um, so they get to reap memories. Ha, mind twist. Nice. Uh, the Spectre magically emits psychic energy in a cone. Each creature makes a DC 15 save, 5d8 damage or be stunned for a minute interesting and they have a scythe because you know why not men talk mind taker and there's there's the glowing stats on their own rad they're like nazgul but they want to eat your brain hey it's the 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 fist and fist and pissed cyclops cyclopes serve the is it league as workshop guardians personal protectors and heavy laborers this is great. This is a cool, this is a cool guy. Yeah, Big Daddy Magitech. So the Nivix Cyclops, they, they're immune, or they have uh, advantage on saves against magic. Um, immunities to poison and psychic, because they have their cool gear on. Uh, and immediately after a creature casts a spell of first level or higher within 120 feet, they can move up to twice his speed without provoking an attack and then make a slam attack. Oh, neat. So as you cast things, he moves around. 120 feet. Wow. And then he can run. What's his, what's his run speed? 30? Neat. <laughs> the anti-mage. Or a mage's guardian, right? Target of his choice. He doesn't have to attack the mage. He's vitalized by magic. Yeah. That's dope. Uh, so a hybrid brute. So this is like um, the base template for creating Simic hybrids. Hybrid flyer. Right, NPC, that's cool. Hybrid poisoner. So this is the NPC version of the, the PCs, right? Hybrid shocker. 
So if you're fighting the Simic Combine, here's all your here's all your cool little Simic monsters. Hybrid Spy. I feel like it'd be hard to be a spy with giant crab arms stuck on your shoulder, but well, whatever, it's fine. You do what you gotta do. Simic Merfolk. Oh, neat. Okay. So speed of swim, uh, forty. They can breathe air and water. It doesn't say if. Merfolk have legs in, yeah, right? Their legs give them a walking speed of uh, of 30. Okay, cool. They claim a deep connection to Ravnica's primal oceans, almost untouched by civilization. Are the oceans of Ravnica underground? Like, are they, are they like, under, underground seas or, or what? Because, yeah, they must be. Cool. Right, because look, look, check it out, check it out. Okay, so if we look at that map, remember the Simic thing on the map? Um, the Simic thing on the map is a sinkhole. Right? Zonot 7 is a sinkhole with access to the, like, undersea. <laughs> Neat. That's cool. I like that. Cool. So here's a generic, like, Simic merfolk that you could use. Um, let's see what else we got. There's your Skyjack Rock. Oh, he's got a little breastplate on. <laughs> Aw, look at the little guy. Just a little breastplate. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Little bird friend. So you can get one of these if you are a uh, if you're a Wojak uh, Skyrider dude. He just wants to give you flying at a rate of 90 feet per round. Yeah, he's not little. He's a large monstrosity, but listen. Little guy. AC-15, breastplate. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Whoa. Enormous predatory leviathans that feed on drakes, rocks, griffins, and anything else they encounter as they soar through the clouds above Ravnica. Sky swimmer. Oh, it's gargantuan. Whoa. That's awesome. 216 hit points, 18 armor, 60 fly speed. It's gargantuan. Uh, it makes three attacks with a bite and a slam, and it can swallow you. And once you've been swallowed, it can, like, chew on you. Oh, that's cool. It's got that frog hemoth thing. Yeah. Oh, I thought that it was, look, 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 look. I thought it was a sphere with like tendrils, but it's like a snake. Look, you can see its tentacles back there too. It's like a huge sky serpent thing. And what is up with those teeth, buddy? Woof. <laughs> wow. 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 Hey, look, Dave. He's still more charismatic than eight. <laughs> <laughs> he's wiser and smarter than berg too <laughs> uh, i love it all right uh so let's see the uh the sphinx of judgment these are the the top level uh the top level um uh characters in um uh in the azorius so they've got a bunch of cool magic powers a lot of high level stuff a lot of like low level stuff we haven't seen a ton of like mid-level we haven't seen a ton of mid-level stuff yet which is cool i'm into it so they can cast spells they're one of those npcs kind of like a kirin let's see what else we got little thrills oh that's cute look so they're just like flying goblins basically but they have self-sacrifice. So if anything is hit within five feet, the thrall swaps places. Now, this is great. As a reaction, you can jump in place and get hit instead. So if you're an Orzov, you want to have as many servitor thralls as you can get so they can get pummeled to shit instead of you. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good little flesh servitors. Mr. President! <laughs> yep. And then some of them have wings. You know what you do with thralls? You get as many of them as you can, and you sacrifice them to the Lord of the Pit so he doesn't punch you. Hmm. Undercity Medusa. Hey, girl. I like your snake hair. 
So Medusa in in Ravnica are called Gorgons. Um, they have a writhing mass of black serpentine cables for hair, and their hands are scaly claws. The gaze of a Medusa causes living tissue to petrify. Vraska used Harden. It's super effective. <laughs> Uh, this attack gives them a degree of power among the Gorgori out of poor proportion with their small numbers. Okay, all right. Um, not all Gorgons are so ambitious. Some prefer to stalk the empty shadows. Uh, Ludmilla, the Tunnel Viper, Tunnel Viper's rule. Uh, the last surviving members of the Sisters of Stone Death, a hard rock trio of power-hungry Medusas who slew Svogthir, the original Guildmaster of the Swarm. She one day dreams of reclaiming control of the swarm, or at least causing pain to Jared von Savo. Cool. So she can cast Expeditious Retreat, Fog Cloud, or Misty Step. They have magic resistance. They get advantage on any creature that is surprised and deals an extra 10 damage. Wait, don't you normally? No, I guess you don't normally. You just have to be hidden. Uh, and then Petrifying Gaze. I would love for there to be a Gorgon, a playable Gorgon race in the game. Yeah, like a powered down playable that does like hold person. Like we were saying, like a Demi Gorgon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd be cool because I know I'd be into playing one of those. Yep. Yep, yep. They have to intentionally petrify you, yeah. Uh, okay, vampires, vampers, blood drinker vampire. So uh, a blood drinker vampire, if you drink their blood, you get an empathic bond with them. Uh, if they have a bite attack, uh, dealing necrotic damage. If it's humanoid and you bite and they bite someone, they become charmed. Um, they regain necrotic, they regain the necrotic damage as hit points. Um, and that's it. They're not... Yeah, if you drink their blood, you become charmed. Yeah, it's a pretty like typical vampire thing. Um Oh no, they it's the other way around. No, so it's it's they when they drink your blood, you get bound to them. I thought it was both ways. Yeah, bitten creature become charmed. Consuming a creature's blood creates an empathic bond that allows the vampire to influence them. Right, so they don't have to drink your you don't have to drink the vampire's blood. They just need to drink yours. Um and they regain health and yeah, that's cool. I think it'd be fun. I would start with this and then you could add some like class levels or like abilities to it to have NPCs. But if a PC wanted to be a vampire, yeah, I think you'd need to create a new other thing. Also, if you don't like blood, you could be a mind drinker vampire with hex proof and death touch. Yes, here's your answer, Nadja. <laughs> blood drinkers as opposed to mind drinkers. Vampires join House Demir. They can learn to siphon mental energy and memories. Uh, founder of House Demir, Zadok was the first mind drinker. Uh, they get a whole bunch of charming spells, stealth in the shadow. These guys do have sunlight sensitivity. Uh, and then uh, they have mind siphon. So mind siphon uh, deals 86 psychic damage and they discern surface thoughts and emotions. On a successful save, general emotional state and only half as much damage yeah mind drinker okay worms limbless wingless dragons they burrow through the earth and eat virtually anything they come across Shiolud. bless the makers comings and goings <laughs> so they are huge. They have 18 AC and 200 hit points. They sense, they create and sense tremors. Okay, they're the tremors worms then. Um, they deal double damage to objects and structures, and they burrow through solid rock at half their burrow speed. If they bite you, you get swallowed and you die. <laughs> cool. Yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me go back to that. Let me go back to that worm for a second. That, that worm's doing a pog champ. <laughs> worm champ. <laughs> it's pretty good <laughs> uh, that's great <laughs> uh, cool goblin gang member so as differentiated from like regular type goblins um, all members of Krenko's oh these guys are from the adventure these are from Krenko's um, uh, like the, the adventure what is it called Krenko's way Carlito's way 
So they're just they're just goblins. They're CR one quarter goblins, and when you kill one, you can find out what possessions they have. I guess they could use it before they die. Can I just tell you, I love bald goblins with sideburns. Like I love that as a thing. It's so fucking good. <laughs> yep, love it, love it. It's a good look. Here's Krenko. Old Krenko, boss of the goblin mob. I'm going to skip him for spoiler purposes. A loading rig? Oh, a construct. I see. Okay, it's an unstable construct that can slam you. I guess it's like the loading armor from, from uh, what's this called? Um, aliens. Okay, so we're getting into, uh, we're getting into, um, uh, people now. So these are, if you're looking for, if you're looking for stats on characters, you might recognize or like individual, uh, individual NPCs. Now we're getting into it. So we got a soldier reprinted here because there's so many of them. Uh, we got, let's see, Lavinia. She worked alongside Jace, the living guild pack, scheduling appointments and relaying messages. <laughs> Okay, so there's Asperia, Guildmaster of the Senate. Uh, Asperia, Guildmaster of the Azorius Senate. Let's see. She's a gargantuan monstrosity with 261 hit points. Uh, she has uh, innate spell casting all the way up to 8th level. Supreme legal authority. Uh, oh, my God. This is awesome. <laughs> Supreme legal authority. She chooses three targets. And uh, each target makes an intelligence save, DC 23 intelligence save, or Asperia chooses an action for that target. Attack, cast a spell, dash, disengage, dodge, help, hide, ready, search, or use an object. Like, I'm just going to take your turn for you. Three of them. Every turn, unless they make the save. That is fucking cool. Like, you, use your best, you, cast power word kill on your friend. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Every turn until they make the save, right? Uh, and, uh, oh, hold on. No. No, it doesn't. It blocks them. Oh, that's even cooler. She seals the action. Oh, totally. Look. She chooses an action for that target. The affected target can't take that action for a minute. Oh, she makes it illegal. That is even cooler. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't cast a spell. You can't cast a spell. You can't cast attack. You can't dodge. Wow. That is great. Yeah, you don't get to hit today. That's way more Azorius. And people wonder, people wonder if there's going to be more control decks in the next set. I'm going to go ahead and just guess yes, probably. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. So here's Law Mage. Uh, we've seen her already. Uh, she's a member of the, the Azorius. Um, we've got a precog mage. Whoa, that's a cool look. So a precognitive mage, uh, that uses their gifts to solve future crime. Glimpse of the temporal flood. Oh, she can open your mind to, to the temporal flood and stun you. And then... When a mage or a creature can see makes an attack roll, saving throw and ability check, cause it with disadvantage or advantage. Neat. What CR are these? Uh, three. That makes about makes sense. It's about right. All right. Tajik. 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 Let's see him. Come on. Let's see my big dusky boy. Okay, fine. Just coming out swinging. The greatest. High queen. High queen of Ravnica. Man, I love her. She's so badass. Uh, cool. So this is Aurelia. Um, Aurelia, let's look at her, let's look at her stats. What do you got going on for you, Aurelia? Uh, 22 armor, 287 hit points, 150 foot fly speed. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, she's resistant to necrotic and radiant, immune to poison, can't be charmed, exhausted, frightened, paralyzed, or poisoned. She's challenge rating 23. Uh, she has legendary resistance and magic resistance. She makes three longsword attacks and uses leadership. So what does she got? Plus 15 to hit. 
for D8 plus 8 and 68 radiant damage. That's why I love her so much. Look at her fucking charisma. Look, how could I resist? Her lowest stat is 17 intelligence. It's like a demigod, right? Um, she doesn't have flyby, so because Aurelia's card doesn't have vigilance, but she can give flyby to other people, I guess. Um, so what does leadership do? She's got mentor, uh, utters a few inspiring words, and if a creature can hear her within 30 feet, it can add a D10 to one attack roll or saving throw before the start of her next turn. And then she has the war leader's helix, uh, which is a recharge ability that deals 12 D8 radiant damage. Choose another creature, uh, that regains 68 hit points, right? The hand that burns and the hand that heals, right? The two, she's got a red, white fire attack. Um, she cannot be moved, uh, knocked prone or, or whatever if she uses her reaction. And she can parry, where she adds seven to her AC. It's pretty baller, 29 armor class. Um, and she can command allies to make weapon attacks, make another longsword attack, or frighten up to five creatures. Yeah, girl. You're cool. Aurelia. Fire Fist. That's cool. Potent Magic and Peerless Fighting Ability. Uh, so this is like a multi-cleric uh, fighter. Yeah. A Boros Fire Fist. It's a CR7 guy. Pretty big deal. But he, he basically is like a, a tough cleric. Yeah, a tough Boros cleric. Frontline medic, but the art is the Wojek bodyguard. I don't understand. <laughs> Boros Reckoner. Whoa. Whoa, boy. This cow is going to flame grill you. Physical power and magical. Oh, these are shock troops. So the other one's like a cleric. This is like a wizard, a fighter wizard. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a card called Frontline Medic. I don't know why they didn't just use it. Whatever. It's fine. All right. Dimmer NPCs. What do we got? Lazav. Yeah, there he is. Lazav, qualified as the Dimmer Spymaster, a shape changer, his mysterious genius, is informed by agents of the entire network. <laughs> Flaw? I can't trust anyone. Oh, my... I don't... My soundboard is still set up for Wednesday's show. I don't have my... Ah, I don't have my, my Illuminati theme. Damn it. Oh, well. Let's see what he can do. He's a CR-17, legendary resistant, shape-changing savant. He's immune to any magic that lets you read his thoughts, determine he's lying, know his alignment. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now, everybody. His alignment is neutral evil. He's neutral evil. Now you don't have to use your spells. Uh, let's see. Three short sword attacks. Lazav rapidly takes the form of several nightmarish creatures lashing out at all nearby. Each creature within 10 feet, DC 21 save or take 48 damage of a type chosen by him. Jesus. He just turns into a bunch of horrible limbs. Uh, Dimmer Mind Mage. Cool. What's this? A level... Spellcasting. Oh, it's an innate... Yeah, he's a psychic spellcaster. Okay. A Thought Spy. Oh, damn. Damn, girl, with the Shadow Priest shoulders. <laughs> Okay. Cunning action, more psychic powers. Ooh, a rapier. She's going to cut your head off. Look out. Golgari swarm. Okay, what do you got, swarms? Um, oh, that's right. Um, the, the Golgari lair, they have lair actions. The group has to include Jared Von Savo or a Golgari Shaman, Crawl Death Priest, Undercity Medusa, or Devkarin Lich. And if they do, now you have all of the Golgari group, like it's a group layer. So they can create uh, tendrils of a fungus, a uh, spore-laden fungi cloud, uh, or overflowing sewage that knocks people prone and push them around. Cool. That would be a fun encounter. A Golgari like sewer um, layer. Sorry, the layer poops on you. So there's Jared Von Savo, Devkrin, Necromancer, and Lich. 
So he's just like, he's a tough lich. He's a tough, cool lich with a magic staff. A Golgari Shaman. These guys have spells. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. So kind of like the NPC monster version of the, the druid that we saw right before. Yep, Golgari Shaman. Um, and we got some Gruul boys. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> These two in the back. Yay! Rawr. Yay! <laughs> uh, rad. Okay. Let's see what we got. Um, Borborygmos. This is the leader of the... This is the high boss of the Gruul clans. Yeah, mightiest of the mighty. Leader of the Burning Tree clan. His ideals? We fight. Flaw? I don't have to listen to anybody. So, he's a giant cyclops. A huge cyclops, in fact. Who is a giant. Uh, 14 armor class. 270 hit points. 18 challenge rating. Poor depth perception. He can use his frightful presence and then makes two attacks. A maul and a stomp. Frightful presence causes fear to everybody in 60 feet. And he has legendary actions to bellow menacingly to frighten. Uh, or move half his speed and move through the space of any creature smaller than huge. Uh, when he does, they make a save or get pushed away. So he makes a makes a path. Clear a path. Yeah, so he just char charges forward, shoving everybody aside. Cool. Oh my god. Awesome. I think I went to high school with this guy. <laughs> Look at he's like strangling this Boros dude. Yeah! Anarchy and Ravnica. <laughs> oh, cute. I love him. <laughs> so uh, an Anarch uh, is a one quarter. Um, you could make them goblins or humans or whatever and throw that stuff on top. And they're basically just aggressive so they can move as a bonus action uh, or they can deal double damage. And they deal double damage to objects and structures. Nice. <laughs> Those black block goblins. Druid of the old way. Wait, is that his hair sticking up through his hat like that? This is a weird look, Druid. <laughs> also, nipple rings. Yep, yep. It's good, good. It's, it's a good costume. You think it's just the hat? I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe they're feathers or something. I mean, it's a skull, but it's his hat, but it's a skull, but it's a hat. It's both. Let's see. Keepers of the Gruul traditions devoted to... Oh, these are the guys that actually remember the, the ancient gods of Ravnica. Ilharg, the Razebor. Kashoth, the Stalker. Right, the, like, forgotten and old gods. They cling to the idea of a coming apocalypse, the end rays, when Ilharg's hoofs will trample every brick and stone of Ravnica's scoring, storing skylines. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Druid of the old ways. That's badass. Yeah, they want to return things to nature. Yeah. Rubble belt stalkers, the scouts and skirmishers of the Gruul clans. Neat. Oh, here we go. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. This section has the one I'm the most excited about. Is it NPCs? Um, these are going to be the uh, the the characters that that live uh, and and operate in the in the Is it faction? Uh, this is the bad boy. This is the one I was waiting for. Fifteen thousand years old, coming to you straight from the Is it Guildgate? It's Niv Mazet. Look at this big bad boy. So. Uh, Niv Mazet is the Perun of the Is It League. Uh, he is a huge deal. He's also an arrogant moron because I find it tedious to converse with simpletons who lack visions. Innovation, don't just have an idea, have all of them. But he's he's getting he's getting he's got all this intelligence, but he's getting he's getting his, his the wool pulled over his eyes by Ral. Right? He really really wants to be a planeswalker, but Ral is like. <laughs> Eh, never mind. <laughs> um, let's see what he can do. So, Niv Mazet, gargantuan dragon, 
22 armor class, 370 hit points. Uh, he's got 40 feet, 30 feet climb speed, 80 feet flying speed. Oh my God. Lionhead. That's a great question. This guy is like, he's right up there for like at the end of dragon hoist. When we, when we, when we move over to, uh, to playing, if we move over to playing a Ravnica game, uh, we'll see if the players can hoist Niv Mazet. Uh, so he has legendary resistance to keep him alive. Locus of the fire mind. Look, he can concentrate on two spells at the same time. Isn't that cool? Advantage in saving throws to maintain concentration, and he can concentrate on two spells at once. He's uh, He's got advantage on saves. Uh, when he deals a spell that deals damage, he can change it to cold, fire, force, lightning, or thunder, however he wants. Right? Just gets to pick. And then he has a fucking shit ton of spells. So many spells. <laughs> Uh, he has a uh, fire breath for 26 D six fire damage. Um, and his, uh, his actions, he can cast a cantrip on someone else's turn, make a tail attack. He can make a wing buffet like wing attack or Draco genius. Every turn he just regains a third level or lower spell slot. Yeah. Force ball, lightning ball, thunder ball, whatever you want. <laughs> pretty cool pretty cool Niv Mazette he's a big boss yeah infinite fireballs if he wants all the balls yeah so that's what I, I was most excited about that I also like this lady I don't know what her canonic name is I think that that is supposed to be portraying by like a different artist I think it's supposed to be this girl too like, I can't tell if they're supposed to be the same character or not. Uh, here, let me grab my Guildmaster's Guide. It's the Guild Mage, right? But I'm not sure, like, I, I guess she's not, a, like, a known character. Maybe they're just two different ladies. Yeah, she's also the girl in Radical Idea. That's right. Yeah, that's what made me think they're all the same character, but they couldn't agree on her hair. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's reasons for that. Um... Okay, let's continue. Let's continue with these guys. I want to see what she can do. But I think she's supposed to be this girl. I think, yeah. And it's cool. It's cool. Different artists take the, the characters and make them look different. But, like, look at how badass she is. A kick-ass princess. Uh, okay. So this is... She represents a Cosmotronic Blast Seeker, which is a spellcaster with a Warhammer uh, who can re-roll four dice of damage with her empowered spell. That's cool. Um, the Blast Seeker can innate, innately cast Scorching Ray Shield, Thunder Wave, or Fireball. Oh, so she's not actually a spellcaster. She's like a fighter who has who has a, a, an item and, and innate spellcasting. So she's kind of like the is it superhero thing. Nice. She's Thor. <laughs> Dope. Electromechanical Thor. That's very cool. I like her. Uh, what else we got? Um, oh, she's, there's, there's a second page. Uh, so you roll, uh, she's got some traits. Uh, oh, this is a counterflux blast seeker. So these ones, uh, create additional effects after casting spells, creating invisible spheres or casting their own spells. Neat. Yeah. Blast seekers. Not all devices produce explosions, but the most interesting ones do. That's hot. That's super cool. Um, okay, and then there's the Flux Blast Seeker. I see. So they're variations of of Blast Seeker and their abilities and their strength. Yeah. Cool. And you could use all this is it stuff for gnomes in your game, right? If you like that kind of like steampunk, magic punk like gnome thing, yeah, you could totally hijack it and throw it into your your game. Scorchbringer Guard. Yeah, those are all quite cool. I like them. They all function kind of similarly. All right, let's look at Orzov. So here's some Orzov characters. Um, these are going to be vampires, maybe. Uh, some some clerics. Some very wicked money lenders. <laughs> let's take a look at what we get. Um, 
first Orzov is an Obzet ghost. Yeah, okay. So the ghosts who make up the Obzidat are traditionally called patriarchs, though they can be male or female. They are the oldest, wealthiest, and most influential oligarchs of the syndicate. So uh, led by Grandfather Karlov, uh, they are scary boss ghosts. That's cool. Uh, let's let's see what abilities they have. You ever wanted a council of ghosts? Oh, wow. The ghost is a trait based on who it is, as shown below. So each ghost has their own trait. And Azescu has Enfeebling Ray. Fautomni has Undead Fortitude. Oh, that's cool. How many of them are there? Like, you would fight all of these at once. So it's the ghost council of whatever CR8, five CR8 ghosts. Cool. That's awesome. This would make a good boss fight. Um, this is actually new lore. The members of the council haven't been named before. Well, their names are Enezku, Fautomni, uh, Karlov, Vuliev, and Zil Zazoz. How the fuck do you pronounce this? Zil Zweeten. That's pretty cool. Right, so they life drain... Right, here you go. As an action, the ghost summons the other four members of the Obzidat. At the start of their next turn, the other members appear, so you can't attack them. You can't attack them one at a time. They can just summon each other. Forced obedience and conjure. They Jesus. The Obzidat ghosts, uh, they can only use them one at a time, uh, but they can summon 1d6 indentured spirits, and there are five of them. Holy hell, you want a lot of ghosts. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, summon that ghost army. Yeah, they have collective actions. Is that is that a collective action? Let me look. Obdizat ghosts can take three legendary actions. No, it looks like they just they just do it on their own. Um Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, if you ever need just like a shit ton of ghosts. Rad. <laughs> oh, here you go. If all five... Oh, I see. So they share if they're within each other. So yeah, they can only summon 1d6 ghosts at a at a time. I mean, Stargamer, we're, we're just... We're, we're not like reading word for word through the book. We're just doing a quick, a quick scan. A quick four-hour scan of the book. <laughs> All right. Remember how I promised you at the beginning the Rakdos, uh, <laughs> the the Rakdos. We would take a look at the Blood Witch. Let's take a look at the Blood Witch. Uh, all right. So a carnival is a lair. So there are lair actions in the carnival, including fire erupts from the ground at four points, whirling blades appear for a moment, and blood splashes all the creatures in a twenty foot sphere. <laughs> Jesus, do not go to the meeting of the Juggalos or you will you will have to deal with these regional effects. All right, let's take a look at some of these. Let's look. Rakdos, the Juggalord. Right, okay, so Rakdos is king of, of the group that bears his name. He is the Juggalord. Oh my God, Juggalos, the gathering. Terrifying. All right, he embodies hedonism, a consummate entertainer whose mere appearance is an act of grisly performance art. All hail the Juggalord. The Juggalismo, if you will. <laughs> so he is a 20 armor class, 300 hit point, CR 24, huge fiend. Uh, he has a captivating presence, uh, which charms people around him. Anyone that can he can see within 60 feet is reduced. He gets hit points. Oh, he's like a buffed version of that other guy. Uh, he has... Hellish Rebuke at will. Uh, all the legendary stuff. His attacks are magical. He's got a scythe called the Curtain Call Scythe. Deals fire damage. He can take three legendary actions, including uh, an ally or a charmed creature must move up to its speed, up to half its speed toward a creature and attack it. He gets a free shot with Curtain Call. Or he can cause the Touch of Pain which is a claw attack and then a save or be poisoned. And if you're poisoned, you cannot maintain concentration on a spell or any other concentration effect. 
The poison creature can repeat the saving throw, ending it on the success. Wow, touch of pain is cool. So he pokes the druid, and the druid can't cast any concentration spells, uh, or can't maintain concentration. Damn. Damn, Rakdos. You fucked up. All right. There's your blood witch. There's your tasty, tasty blood witch. Um, so a Rakdos blood witch. I feel like a game that involves or includes the Rakdos, you really have to sit down with your players and be like, okay, how far do we want to go with the Rakdos here? Like, how much do we want to describe the kinds of shit that might come up, right? Is this just like, like the art, because the art is pretty PG-13. Or do we, in our game, do we like, you know, how how far are we going to go with this stuff? <laughs> yeah, how, how deeply into Hellraiser territory do we want to go? Um, all right, Blood Witches. Blood Witches can perform the Blood Witch Dance. Uh, so control one creature cursed by its hex. It must make a successful saving throw or move up to 30 feet in a direction of the witch's choice as a bonus action. Uh, magical darkness does not impede her her vision. She has a bunch of eldritch spells that she can use. Oh, okay, so she's like a spellcaster with some puppet mastery for moving people around. <laughs> this campaign is rated R for Rakdos. There's a Rakdos lampooner. Ha, 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 I'm Jay Spellerin. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best you've ever looked, Jace. Looking good, buddy. <laughs> kind of looks like Mega Man, too, but that's definitely Jace Bellerin. Uh, I'm the living guilt pact. I'm Jace Bellerin. <laughs> uh, so uh, the Rakdos cult is a uh, has a, these guys, these lampooners, and they're virtuosos of uh, satire. Um, so they cast spells, big charisma, performance and deception checks. Yeah. They serve the Rakdos by making everyone else look bad and bending a public opinion. That's pretty cool. Yeah, evil bar. A Rakdos bard would be... Cool. Uh, so this guy really likes My Chemical Romance. Um... <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> guildmaster's guide to warp tour <laughs> uh, brad <laughs> oh man okay cool so this guy is a uh rakdos blade juggler uh, so he is uh, nimble and is either a blade juggler a fire eater or a high wire acrobat and he's like a basically a rogue, a CR1 rogue. That's not the only thing he juggles. Listen, you can juggle all kinds of fun stuff. Rakdos Fire Eater. Oh, cool. So this guy uh, has a recharge. It's like a human with a breath weapon. 2d8 fire damage. That's cool. That's badass. Uh... Oh, whoa. Dude. Only with massive amounts of fire. I also really like this guy's hat. You've got a great hat, friend. <laughs> cool. I love that shit. That's good stuff. The devil's dude. All right. So if your favorite, if your favorite Dark Souls boss is uh, the dog... Is the sad dog with a sword? Selesnia might be the uh, might be the guild for you. So let's take a look at what kind of NPCs we have for Selesnia. Ah, Lilithfair. I see. So this is Tristani. That's right. Uh, so Tristani is an amalgam of three dryads in one body, will and soul. Um, order, life, and harmony. Power, courage, and wisdom. They most they spend most of their time in the towering tree of Vitugazi, the Selesnia Guild Hall. There, she communes with Mat Selesnia and the Dryads who lead the com communities across Ravnica. So she's just like a super badass Dryad. 
with the wrath of Mat Selesnia, branches and vines whirl at a point you can see within 60 feet, dealing a ton of damage. Oh, cool. And then her legendary actions are Voice of Harmony, a melee attack with a, with advantage. Um, 20 hit points on another creature for the Voice of Life. Dispel Magic as the Voice of Order. Uh, and then Awaken the Grove Guardians, right? Bring trees to life to fight for her. And then, yeah, she's got this um, Suppressing Magic Items attack, too. Yeah, very, <laughs> very green, very green-white for sure. Um, Star Gamer, if you have uh, Ravnica on roll 20, yeah, it, it contains two two separate or three separate objects. There's the compendium stuff, which is what we're looking at now, but the the sort of wallpaper and the tokens and all the maps and stuff, you add those as an add-on. So go to um go to the add-ons for your um for your game. So you create a campaign, go to the add-ons and you add them individually. Um and that'll create a that'll create all the all the screens and everything. Yeah. Horn collar. She doesn't, even have, she doesn't have a horn. Oh, she calls two things. Calls two things that have horns. I see. Got it. Um, oh, it's it's uh, uh, Amara. Um, yeah, Amara is one of these. Um, so she chooses a beast she can see and can use it to make... No, Oh, I see. Okay, so she conjures animals or already has them and then can bless them with one with the world soul and then make attacks with them. That's cool. I love commander mar monsters that let other people make attacks uh, on your turn. I think that stuff's great. Uh, all right. So some Simic. Some Simic NPCs. What do we got? Simic Biomancer? No, nope. Zagana. Oh, this lady. Prime Speaker Zagana, Merfolk Guildmaster of the Simic Combine. I think she's going to be like a spellcaster, lawful neutral, CR 16 spellcaster. Um, she's a 15th level uh, caster. She has advantage on saves against magic, breathes air and water, has the, the prime speaker's trident, emits a thunderous boom, creating a cube emitting from the prongs of the trident, con saves or thunder damage get pushed away, 3d8 damage if you're underwater. Uh, cool. And I guess these are in here because it's one-handed or two-handed. And then Deluge, a wave of water that crashes down an area 120 feet. So, yeah, she stabs and then the thunder waves you. And then this thing is a big thunder wave, but with water. Wall of water, I guess. Um, and then her legendary actions, she gains resistance to one damage of her, her choice, one damage type of her choice. Gets a free melee attack, casts enlarge or reduce on herself, or uses Deluge. On someone else's turn. Right, tidal wave spell, pretty much. Yeah, deluge. Neat. A Simic Biomancer. Any ally starting its turn within 30 feet can regain hit points. Oh, wow. This is just automatic. Ah, oh, that's cool. The Biomancer would pair up really nicely with, like, a troll or something where you just, like, massively boost regen. Any ally that starts their turn within 30 feet gets a D10 hit points. I like that. That's a good ability. And then they're like, they're a caster. So they'd want to have fighters in front of them and then they just stand behind and like waft green energy. Yeah. And I think, I think that's our last, that's our last monster. That's it. That's the last monster. So obviously we skipped over the, the big lore chunks uh, of the, uh, of the, of the game. We didn't touch Krenko's way at all. But there's a lot to this. I don't know. I don't even know the total page count. It's like 300, I think. Um, there is a lot to this uh, this particular um, <laughs> this particular uh, expansion, and I wanted to sit down and, and kind of go through it and and look at this. And I'm hoping that either through the GMs uh, the DMs Guild uh, or through another release, there'll be more like cool Ravnica stuff. Like right now, there's just Ravnica. There's the guide, and there's like physical dice. But that's that's pretty much it. I, I would say that this is this is probably like this has been a good it's been a good couple of years for mad uh, for um D and D right like we got Tome of a Tomb of Annihilation which is my favorite adventure so far I think this is my favorite supplement it certainly has the most stuff 
And um, we can't officially announce anything yet because it's not official, but it's my desire that we finish Dragon Heist, we do a level of Mad Mage so we can get a taste for the Mad Mage, and then we stop and we start a new campaign, twitch.tv slash d that's what I hope, uh, that we start a new campaign uh, in Ravnica. Our illustrious champion returns. Welcome back, Chromatic Chameleon. Welcome so that's home. so that's it. That's it for my that's it for my my walkthrough uh, of this. If we do end up doing a campaign, um, I will do some GM prep. We'll do we'll sit down and we'll we'll walk through like prepping the game and making notes and doing all of that stuff. Uh, and um, and now you've gotten a real good look at the the setting of Ravnica. Uh, I hope that you you learned a thing or two uh, about the uh, about the game and that maybe you're interested in checking it out yourself. Um, my obviously my my preference is Roll Twenty because all of my games are online. Um, but it is uh, out now in game stores uh, and available uh, later in the month uh, on Amazon and what have you. If you want the physical book, if anybody gets the dice. Can you like tweet them at me? I want to see what they look like cuz I know they come with a like a guild die so you can roll for like a random guild. Yeah, neat. Cool. So that's it. That's the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. I thought this was only going to take an hour, but here we are, four and a half hours later. Uh thanks for watching, uh everybody. This has been uh the deep dive into Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica and we will see you next time. Bye everybody.